My name is T.J. Reddy. I refer to myself as an artist because I am a bit more non-conventional and multi-dimensional. That being said, I am also a poet, a painter, and my interest in the Mbira, another reference to the African thumb piano, uh, one of just several names by which it is referred to. I make a connection with the verbal or the literal, the uh, painterly, or the visual, and the sound of music that emanates from this instrument that informs me of how to remain connected to the other sources of my connection to the art. So, the instrument has a history that goes back at least 400 years to Zimbabwe, an ancient African kingdom. And it is indigenous to that area and but not exclusive to it because the instrument shows up in different uh, countries all over Africa. But for the sake of this particular uh, exercise, the connection with it beginning with playing it. And playing it is relatively simple. And the simplicity is it's one, two, three. To give you an idea of what I mean when I say one, two, three, that's a form of what I call a triadic reference. Giving you another way to look at it, you start initially with, that is, telling the listener what you are going to tell them. So it's much like a reference to a story being told or a sermon. And the instrument, in my opinion, relates to the, uh, the connection with its sound being involved with the the, the players or the tines of which these are called, not keys, they are referred to as tines, T-Y-N-E, so that you're able to have a, a, a much more um, connective reference to what it is you're playing. So, the one, two, three, this pattern, four piece, which I call home or your root key. And you can change the pattern, the sound, based on the rhythm. And that's the first root. The second root goes to the second change, which are the keys that, times rather, that move to the opposite side. That's your second change. And then back to the beginning again. And then the third change, which lets you know you're going to go back home again, are the last three keys, going from the inside to the outside. And then back to the beginning. So, to have it sort of all put together in a sound pattern that you can pretty much understand is... So that pattern is reflective in the way we tell stories. Tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you've told them. So the changes are basically three, back to the triadic reference again, and keeps the story of the sound, because that's how I see it, the, the instrument is actually telling a story, and it's making the story comprehensive through the sound that it makes. So when it goes up, you know, you know you're reaching a point of changing to get back to where you started from. 
And once again, it's much like parts of the body with the head, the torso, and the legs, you know, having to be a part of the reference to what you stand on to get back to the head again. So that is a basic, simplistic reference to this instrument being uh, indigenous to a way of being related to that's not Western. And you, you can't always expect to play the same thing the same way all the time. It is in the idiom of jazz as well, which has a more reflective and, and spontaneous and uh, soulful way of being uh, played. And it's not so much you play the instrument as it plays you. So that's how I approach it. And it is one of the ways that will uh, probably get some more reference to how others who are playing at the same time can, although doing variables, can come up with the same sound, generally speaking. Once you forget that you're not playing according to a Western theoretical formulated uh, system. So that's the beginning. So now what I'd like to do is to show another instrument similar. Also, I'm not quite sure whether it's an indigenous or not, but it has a beautiful sound as this one. And my thinking is that this one comes from Ghana, but it's, it, it's a tortoise shell. So actually the sound chambers can be made from a variety of different things, from gourds to uh, 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 pans, uh, to tortoise shells, to uh, a number of different ways to uh, actually house or build a chamber for the sound to emanate from. And many of them have resonators, the holes on the side which, which can modulate or vary the sound. So now I'd like to just show how the instrument is played with more orchestration and more arrangement so that you can get an idea of it being a little bit a little more extensive than just playing it singularly 